So now that the summer months are upon us, that means that there are going to be a lot of official visits and a ton of exciting recruiting news. And today, we need to talk about a prospect that we've previously talked about before, but we haven't made a dedicated video on him. A prospect that this Alabama staff is really high on in hopes to get a big time flip. And of course, today we're going to be talking about and breaking down Keelan Russell, the quarterback for Duncanville High School, who's currently committed to SMU, a four star prospect, but a prospect that would not shock me if he ended up in five star range. Before we dive into this, y'all know the drill. I've got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, give me a Y for yes and for no. Do you believe that Alabama will get a big flip for Russell? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below as those interactions seem small. They are massive for content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And first and foremost, who is Keelan Russell? Well, I'm sure most of you already know the answer to this question, but as always, whenever we're talking about a very talented prospect, this is how we start the video. Russell is a four-star quarterback who ranks per the 24-7 sports composite as the number 38 player in the nation, the number six quarterback, and a top 10 player in the state of Texas. And I don't need to tell you how loaded Texas is on a year-in, year-out basis. A few cycles ago, whenever I looked, there were 50 players in the state of Texas that ranked in the top 300 prospects in all of high school football per the composite rankings. That tells you a lot. And to be a top 10 player in this state, that says a ton. He stands six foot three and 175 pounds for 24-7 sports. And whenever you turn on the film, there's no shortage of things to be excited about. There's no shortage of things to love. One of the first things you're going to realize is that he plays in one of, if not the most competitive high school football league in all of America. And not only does he play in that league, he dominates it. In 2022, he took over the starting position and went 15-0 and led Duncanville to a state title. What did he do in 2023 to surpass that? Well, he went 14-1 and and won yet another state championship. Once again, this is 6A Texas high school football. This is an incredibly grueling schedule. And one of the things I always talk about with certain high schools out there, certain leagues in these high school ranks, is you love getting guys from them. Why? Because they're practicing against people who will be playing on Saturdays. They're playing against people who will be playing on Saturdays. At that level, they've already embraced competition. This is something that they're used to. They are used to the grind, and that will help make that transition a little bit easier. Because the transition from high school football to college football is a massive jump, and anything you can do to alleviate some of that pressure, in my opinion, is a good thing. Getting guys from a Duncanville, from a modern day, from an IMG, those guys have already embraced some of the things that they're going to be seeing on Saturday because they've been going through it every single day of their high school career. But one of the other things that I love about Russell is not only that he won back-to-back -back state championships, how could you not like that in the state of Texas, what he did this past season, where he passed for 3,483 yards, 38 touchdowns to three interceptions, and did so with a 72.1% completion percentage. That is really impressive. And yes, he's got talented people he's throwing the ball to. DeCorey and Moore, one of the top wide receivers in all of the nation. But whenever you watch Russell play, he's not just relying on his wide receivers. He is creating opportunities with his leg to take advantage of his arm talent. And this is something we've talked about with some quarterbacks here recently. Something that I absolutely love. Whenever a quarterback has mobility, and Russell certainly does, this past season, he was just shy of 400 yards, had six touchdowns on the ground, but he accounted for 5.8 yards per carry. He just didn't carry it a lot. Why I love that so much is with these athletic quarterbacks, they will use their legs as an extension of the passing game. Russell's one of those guys where he's not looking to run first. In fact, he's looking to scan the field, stay in the pocket. If he needs to escape, he's going to escape and use his legs as an extension of the passing game where his eyes are still downfield. He's still trying to create openings through all the chaos. Something that we talked about Bryce Young did as well as anybody I've ever seen. And I'm certainly not comparing him to Bryce Young. I'm just pointing out that there is a quality that I talked about all the time with Bryce Young that Russell also possesses, and they're not alone. 
There are other quarterbacks that have done this. Ty Simpson did this very well, where Ty Simpson's a mobile quarterback, and he's using his legs in a lot of instances to create opportunity in the passing game, move the pocket around, get defenders to make a decision. Am I going to go get the quarterback? Am I going to stay in zone or stay in my on my man? Because either way, I'm going to make you choose wrong. If you have that ability, you are going to put defenders in a blender, and Russell has that ability. He has got a live arm. He can make every throw in the book, and he's a very talented prospect. Now, many of you are probably wondering, but what about Juju Lewis, a quarterback that this Alabama staff has been after? And while Juju Lewis is someone that this staff will continue to chip away at, I also like what this staff is doing in that they're not going to wait. They're not going to sit on their hands. There are a ton of talented quarterbacks in this class, and in my opinion, Russell is as talented as any of them. He certainly plays in a league that displays just how gifted he is every single time he touches the field. They're not going to sit and wait on a maybe. They're going to be proactive. That's something I talk about all the time that I love when a coaching staff will do. I don't like when they sit on their hands. I like when coaching staffs are proactive. Juju Lewis wants to take his time with his recruiting process, as he should. You only do this once. You should take your time with it. You should enjoy it. But as a coaching staff, you also have to realize that we don't want to go down to the wire for a quarterback that might not commit to us, and then we're left with no quarterback in a class, in a class filled with talented quarterbacks. So what do they do? They start evaluating. And it did not take long for this staff during the evaluation process of Russell to realize he is as gifted as any other quarterback in this class, and they pulled the trigger. They offered him on the spot. Nick Sheridan loved his game. And when you turn on the film, as I alluded to earlier, super easy to see why. Very talented, very game, and plays in a hyper-competitive league. So yes, this staff will continue chipping away at a very talented quarterback like Juju Lewis. Why wouldn't they? But at the same time, they're not going to sit on their hands. They're not going to sit and wait until December playing the will-he-won't-he game, especially when there are other quarterbacks in the class they really like. And Russell is certainly one of those guys. Heck, I talked about this not too long ago, that I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up in five-star status. When we look, he's just shy of it. Typically, and this isn't always the case, some years there are more than 32, some years there are less, but typically there are 32 five-stars per recruiting class. Russell currently sits as the number 38 prospect in the nation, the number six quarterback, and once again, the number 10 player in the state of Texas. Do I believe that he could move up six spots and become a five-star? Absolutely. If he replicates the years he's put together in 2022 and 2023, of course I believe that. And especially if we dive into the details. To quote Coach Sean, by the way, go subscribe to Coach SPH over here on YouTube. Fantastic content, and I'm lucky enough to be able to collab with him on several projects, and it's always a great time. I think very highly of Coach Sean, and I think his content is absolutely worth your time. But to quote one of my good friends, Coach Sean, the truth is in the details. And when we dive into the details of Russell's growth, he threw for over a thousand more yards in 2023 than he did in 2022. He's continuing to grow as a quarterback. And I don't think that growth is done. I think that's why the staff is so excited. So do I believe he could end up as a five-star? Certainly. The rankings reflect that as we sit here and conversate about this very talented prospect. Only six spots away, and that's assuming that this class ends at 32 five-stars. We've seen classes with 34, 35 five-stars, in which case he'd only need four or three spots moved up. So absolutely, I believe that he could end up as a five-star. I think he's got all the ability. And when we look at the trajectory that he is currently taking, I think he could end up it, and I believe he will. So can't wait to hear from all of you. Do you believe Alabama pulls off a big-time flip? Whenever we look at this, he's currently committed to SMU. And all due respect to SMU, I live not far from their campus. It is a beautiful campus. It is a fantastic education. All due respect to SMU and Rhett Lashley, SMU football doesn't compare to Alabama football. And if you're looking to play on a big-time stage where multiple guys have been sent to the NFL, Alabama's the move. And if anyone is thinking, but Ty, that was under Nick Saban, I don't fully disagree. Nick Saban went on a historic run, and that's what makes him the GOAT. However, Alabama was a blue blood before Nick Saban got there. 
they only further cemented themselves as the blue blood with Nick Saban. And now they hire a coach that inherited a Washington program that needed a lot of work and within two years was in a national championship game. A coach that brings with him an offensive staff that's as good or better than any in the nation. A coach that has developed quarterbacks, who has an offensive coordinator who was a quarterback at the Power 5 level and has been a great developer of quarterback talent. A wide receiver coach who just put three wide receivers into the NFL and was the offensive passing coordinator over at Washington. And a tight end coach that set records at Western Kentucky with Bailey Zappi. That's a tough staff to say no to, so I can't wait to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, let me know what you're thinking. Do you believe Alabama pulls off this flip? That's it. See ya.